So one of the most common things an orthodontist does is to fix crooked teeth. Well, in today's episode, we're gonna talk about some of the ways that your orthodontist makes room for those crooked teeth. So let's go. What is up, my YouTube family? Dr. Greg here, back with another episode of Braces Explained. Today, I kind of wanna take a step back from you know the nitty gritty of orthodontics and kind of talk about a big picture how an orthodontist makes room for crooked teeth. But before we get into it, I want you guys to go down to the description of today's video and make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And also, if you're an orthodontist watching this channel or any healthcare professional, I'm gonna put a link in the description of today's video because I wanna thank all of you that have helped contribute to this channel and actually wanna give back to some of those doctors out there. So if you are interested in being part of this community, go ahead and check out the link in today's video. This is for orthodontists and other healthcare professionals only. Alrighty, let's get into it. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the ways that your orthodontist fits crooked teeth into the mouth. And as always, if you wanna jump ahead, I'm gonna put the timestamps out in this corner so you can jump to wherever you want but I really wanna break it down into two main things, okay? I want you guys to think about this in a big picture, okay? Whenever we have crooked teeth or crowding, it's pretty much like there's more cars in a parking lot than there are parking spots, okay? So when we're thinking about fitting teeth in the arch orthodontically, there's two things we have to consider. Do we want to increase the space available or do we want to decrease the space required, okay? So if we're thinking of the metaphor of cars in a parking lot, do we want to make it so that more cars can fit in that lot? Or do we want to decrease the need for all those spots in the parking lot, okay? This will make more sense, I promise, just bear with me here. And if you have any questions about today's video or any of the content we talked about in today's video or last week's video, please let me know in the comments of today's video. We're gonna be doing a YouTube Live again this upcoming Wednesday, October 21 at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. So I'll make a reminder post on here as well as on the Braces Club. So be sure to stay tuned for that and check in. But let's first look at the topic of increasing the space available. Because the fact is that every case is independent. In certain cases, we want to increase the space available Whereas in other cases, we want to decrease the space required. And this is because of a lot of different factors. There has to do with stability, your facial appearance, your teeth positioning. There's, there's so many factors into it, but this is just a general statement on how we can fit crowded teeth into an arch. But anyways, let's go back to the concept of increasing the space available. Now there's two ways that your orthodontist can increase the space available. One of the ways that we can increase the space available or basically make more parking spots for all of these cars is by a thing called expansion. And expansion can be done in basically one of two ways. We can actually make your jaws wider, making that upper arch wider, or we can push the teeth to go outward more. So basically we can have skeletal expansion, or we can have dental where we push the teeth outward and develop the arches, right? Make it so that the perimeter of the teeth is actually wider so that we can fit more teeth into the arch. When we're younger, we can actually successfully expand that upper jaw pretty easily because during growth, the upper jaw is basically two bones that can be separated. But as we age, there's this thing called a suture where these bones go in and kind of like interdigitate like a zipper, which makes it harder to separate that upper jaw. Now, it's not impossible to separate. This can be done by either using surgery or mini screws in the palate, but we'll talk about that in another video. But whether we expand this upper jaw skeletally or dentally, the concept is the same. The goal is to push the teeth outward, right? To laterally expand the jaws. Because if you think about it, if we expand the jaws, we're gonna have more room to fit all the teeth in the dental arch, right? And the second way we can increase the space available is by leaning the front teeth forward, and that's called proclining the teeth. Both of these do the same thing. They basically make the arches larger so that we could fit more teeth in the arch. But there are limitations to this because we are limited by the bony housing. You can't push the teeth so far forward because the teeth are basically in a horseshoe of bone. If we were to push those teeth too far forward, we're actually to push the teeth out of the bone and that's one unstable two bad for your underlying bone and three really just bad for your teeth because there's no long-term stability the good thing is that your orthodontist is trained in looking at the bony housing of the teeth looking at the x-rays and doing what's most stable for you but it's not like we can always expand or we can always procline because there are limitations to how much we can do those things. So those are pretty much the two ways that your orthodontist can increase the space that's available. You can either expand the dental arches by making them wider, or you can increase the arch perimeter by leaning the lower teeth forward. So the two main ways that your orthodontist can increase the space available is by expansion or proclination. So that brings us to the second point. How does your orthodontist decrease the space required? Well, let's first go back to the metaphor about the parking lot, okay? So it's pretty easy to understand how to increase the space available in a parking lot, right? You just add more parking spots. 
but to decrease the space required is something a little bit more difficult to comprehend. One way that we could decrease the space required is by simply having less cars, right? And the second way that we can make it so that more cars can fit in this parking lot is by decreasing the size of these cars. So basically, if we were gonna sub out all of our Hummers with basically smart cars. So if you want to decrease the space required, you either decrease the size of the cars or you decrease the number of cars that you need to fit in that parking lot, right? So your orthodontist can do the exact same thing in your case. If there's severe crowding, they can decrease the space required by either extracting teeth or by decreasing the size of the teeth that are already in the arch. I have a whole video where I talk about the reasons why orthodontists might extract. And one of the reasons that we talked about in the video was because of severe crowding. And that's what we're talking about in today's video. If we have severe crowding and we don't want to expand or procline the teeth because of a number of reasons, one of the ways that your orthodontist could fit the teeth into the arch is by taking out some teeth. And this is in the case of severe crowding. But let's say that the crowding isn't so severe that we could sub out some of these cars with smaller cars and get them to all fit. Well, that's something called interproximal reduction. And we've talked about this in a previous video. We've actually talked about it a lot in a bunch of different videos, but this is basically slenderizing the teeth and making the teeth a little bit more skinny so that we could fit them in the arch. This is like trading in some of our Hummers for some smart cars in our parking lot so that we could fit the same number of cars but we don't need as much space because the cars are smaller. So those are pretty much the main ways that your orthodontist can deal with crooked and crowded teeth. Now, to be honest, most of the time, your orthodontist uses a combination of these things. We use some expansion, we use some proclination, we might have to extract or use IPR, but it's not like your orthodontist only will expand or only will extract. A lot of the times we'll use a combination of these things to give you that stable, aesthetic, and functional result that you want and your orthodontist wants for you. Now, whether we should be increasing the space available or decreasing the space required, that really depends on your case and your orthodontist plan for your treatment. Sometimes we only want to increase the space available and sometimes we only want to decrease the space required. And this is dependent on a number of factors. But the biggest thing is that you and your orthodontist communicate openly about this because you want to make sure that you're expressing your concerns to him or her and you want them to express their reasoning for why they're planning a certain treatment plan for your specific case. So really quick, I want to basically do a quick run through through today's video. Your orthodontist can deal with overcrowded teeth by either decreasing the space required or increasing the space available. They can increase the space available by expanding or proclining the teeth and they could decrease the space required by either extracting or performing IPR on your teeth to make it so that they all fit into the arch. If you've had one or more of these things done, let me know in the comments of today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as a reminder, if you have any questions about today's video, please leave them in the comments and we will be doing a live this upcoming Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time, so be sure to be there. If I don't see you guys this Wednesday, be sure to stay healthy, happy, and keep smiling. And I will catch you guys next Saturday on another episode of Braces Explained. But for now, Dr. Greg, out.